Bees are essential for the well-being of our ecosystem. They are responsible for pollinating the majority of flowering plants across the globe, as well as 35% of the world's food crop production. Without bees, our entire agricultural system will collapse, but we have been systematically killing bees with advances in farming practices for the last 70 years. In this video, we will discuss what bees do for us, why they are dying, and how we can help them. It is no understatement to say that the domesticated honeybee is a major cornerstone of our civilization. As well as being responsible for one third of the world's food production, honeybees also enhance the production of 90% of the world's 107 most important food crops. This includes 75% of the fruit, veg, nuts and seeds that we eat, as well as plants used to feed animals. And let's not forget about coffee. The economic value of the contribution of pollinators in human food production has been estimated at 153 billion euros, nearly 10% of global food production for human consumption. If all the pollinators disappeared, thousands of plant species would die out, which could lead to a global famine, threatening the lives of millions. But unfortunately for us, honeybees are dying out. In the United States alone, we went from having 5.9 million domesticated beehives in 1947 to 2.5 million in 2015, with farmers reporting losses of 30 to 90% of their colonies by 2006 and a further 40% loss in the winter of 2019. This is far above what is considered acceptable or sustainable. But this problem is not exclusive to honeybees. Scientists have been observing a decline in wild and domesticated pollinators worldwide. We have diagnosed this bee apocalypse as colony collapse disorder, and it's affecting colonies across the globe. The cause of this disorder is multifaceted and difficult to counter or even explain simply. But if we're going to protect our ecosystem and our food supply, we need to first understand how to protect our bees. If a plant makes a flower, it almost certainly relies on an animal pollinator, like a bee, to help it reproduce. Flowers offer pollen and nectar as food for bees. When the bee feeds on the flower, its fuzzy body gets covered in pollen, which they transport to other flowers, pollinating the plant. This evolutionary codependence has made bees extremely efficient at pollinating the plants they evolved with. In fact, there are over 20,000 species of bees in the world, and they pollinate countless species of plants, maintaining our planet's food chain and biodiversity. Bees are dying from multiple interacting causes, namely monocultures, a flowerless landscape, pesticides, disease, environmental pollution and climate change. These are all symptomatic of a dysfunctional food system, which can only be fixed by understanding each component and how they affect each other. We'll start with monocultures. Since the 1950s, we've been systematically eliminating flowering plants that bees need for their survival. We changed our farming practices with the introduction of synthetic fertilizers, pesticides and high yield crop varieties. In addition, farming laws such as the US Farm Bill heavily subsidise farmers and reward them for producing far more than required. This encourages larger and larger monoculture plantations, where huge areas of land are replaced by one or two crops. This offers no nutritional diversity for the bees, which compromises the hive's health system, making them more susceptible to disease and parasites. Flowerless landscapes The lack of a diverse landscape of plants and flowers is creating nutritional problems for bees. Cover crops are crops planted between the crop rotation process, with the specific purpose of improving soil quality. They are essentially natural fertilisers, with the added benefit of providing a highly nutritious food source for bees. But these have been replaced with synthetic fertilisers decades ago, eliminating this food source. We also started using herbicides to kill off weeds in public areas, gardens and farms. These represent another food source for bees, which are being eliminated. Glyphosate, the active ingredient in modern herbicides, has been steadily increasing in use, as have herbicide-resistant weeds. This has facilitated the need to use even more herbicides to maintain crop yield. Pesticides Pesticides are designed to kill unwanted pests, but their toxic properties and widespread use are also harming beneficial insects, such as bees and other pollinators. Pesticide contamination has been detected in wax and hive products. This has a compound effect with other bee stressors, such as parasites, causing a decrease in bee health. Neonicotinoids are a particularly harmful group of pesticides. When a bee feeds on plants sprayed with them, their central nervous system can be negatively affected. If this doesn't immediately kill the bee, then it affects key survival tasks such as feeding, navigation, foraging 
and reproducing. Disease and parasites. The parasitic mite, known as Varroa destructor, is recognised as the major factor in colony deaths across the globe, and its prevalence in beehives has been growing. This tiny mite attaches itself to honeybees and saps its strength. These parasites can grow in number from 50 to over 3,000 in 7 months, quickly destroying even a strong beehive, and they are gaining resistance to chemicals beekeepers use to control them. Further, new virus species have been found in the US, and several of these have been associated with colony collapse disorder. Environmental pollution and climate change. Flowers emit a mixture of scents that attract insect pollinators. However, air pollutants obscure these scent molecules, which insect pollinators use to locate their food. The pollution-modified plant odours can confuse bees and increase foraging time, which decreases pollination efficiency. Climate change is making our winters warmer and wetter, shifting the seasons and generally moving the natural world out of sync. This means that many wild species are finding themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. Bees are especially sensitive as they rely on the predictable timing of the seasons and the flowering of plants so they can coordinate their nesting and foraging behaviour. As you can see, the reason bees are dying is a complex, multifaceted problem with each source of stress amplifying the effect of other sources. The problem can only be solved by addressing the root cause, which in this case is our dysfunctional global food system. Poor farming practices and policies like the US Farm Bill exist in many developed nations. If changing agricultural law for the environment isn't enough incentive for your country's decision makers, then maybe changing to reduce government spending might be. Most nations heavily subsidise their farmers to keep prices low and production high. But in 1984, New Zealand went from subsidising 40% of farmers' income to nearly zero. This did not cause a mass food shortage or an unreasonable price increase. Instead, New Zealand's farms adapted, becoming incredibly efficient and reducing their pesticide use by 50%. This could be further improved by encouraging diversified farming practices in order to start correcting the dysfunction in our food system. And the sooner the better, because bees are dying in droves and we are planting more and more crops that need them. In the last 50 years, there has been an increase of 300% in crop production that requires bee pollination. So what can you do about it? Luckily, there are a few simple steps we can all take today to help wild and domesticated bee populations. You can plant bee-friendly flowers that are native to your corner of the world. This is really easy to do if you have a garden, but flowers can also be planted in pots on your doorstep or windowsill, and remember to use pesticide-free soil. You can also contact your local council and ask them to plant flowers in public spaces, roadsides and parks. You can campaign to reform your country or region's farming practices. Talk to your local authorities about replacing hedgerows and crop borders with flowering plants. Ask them to consider reintroducing cover crops to nourish the soils in a more ecological way than using synthetic fertiliser. Finally, you can buy honey produced in an ecologically friendly way. Avoid honey from bees fed on a single crop and support farmers that are nourishing their bees correctly. By doing these things, we can help to correct our dysfunctional food system, because at the end of the day, when bees have access to good nutrition, we have access to good nutrition. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and check out some of our other videos. Look after yourselves, each other, and the bees around you. Thanks again, R. Eden.